Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yang Xi, and today I'll present our work, Mitigating Set Attack on Logic Locking. So here is an outline of our presentation today. So firstly, I will introduce the security threats in modern IC supply chain. And then I will introduce a countermeasure called logic locking. Then I will talk about a new attack called set attack, which has broken the security of logic locking techniques. And then uh, in, our, in this work, we propose an uh, anti-set block design that is provably secure against the so, uh, set attack. So nowadays, the fabrications of uh, integrated circuits has been increasingly outsourced to uh, off uh, offshore foundries. And this is due to two reasons. The firstly, um, the development of semiconductor fab is very expensive. So it is, it is estimated to be more than $15 billion in 2020. And secondly, the IC designs are becoming increasingly complex. So more and more design companies would rather concentrate their resources and efforts on design and outsource the fabrication to offshore foundries. These uh, IC design companies are called fabulous IC design companies. However, the offshore foundry might not be trustworthy and several attacks have been proposed. Um, the offshore foundry can reverse engineering the layout files and obtain the gate level net list which is called IP piracy. And he can also uh, utilize the already fabricated masks to fabricate extra copies of chips and sell them into the market. Besides, hardware trojans can also be um, inserted into the uh, during fabrication. And it will introduce a backdoor and uh, temper the reliability of the design. So this will cause economic loss and unreliable products for most IC design companies. So various uh, techniques, countermeasures have been proposed, and logic locking is one of the preventive techniques. So the basic idea is during fabrication, uh, sorry, during design time, so there's a typo here, during design time, the designer will lock the circuit by adding additional logic gates called key gates and adding key inputs. And the locked circuit preserves the original functionality only when a correct key is loaded into the on-chip memory. So the left figure here shows an overview of the locked circuit, and the right figure shows an example of inserting key gates and key inputs. So without a correct key, the attacker in the foundry cannot know, cannot understand the functionality of the circuit, so he cannot pirate the um, IP of the design. So various logic locking techniques have been proposed, and based on key gate types, they can be classified into three main categories, uh, XOR, XNOR based, mask based, and lookup table based. Besides, many key gate insertion algorithms have been proposed. So the simplest way to insert key gate is to randomly distribute the key gates into the net list. And, uh, the second method is to increase output, the objective is to increase output corruptibility. So um, some people have proposed a fault analysis based insertion algorithm, which tries to insert key gates at locations that can affect many primary outputs. And the third method is called interference analysis based insertion algorithm. So its objective is to insert key gates at secure location that cannot be easily sensitized to primary outputs. So the security uh, of logic locking techniques is based on the assumption that the attacker cannot learn the correct key, and several attacks have been proposed to learn the key. So in their attack models, they assume that the attacker has access to two components. The first component is a lock net list which is obtained by reverse engineering the layout. The second component is an activated chip, which is obtained from open market. And this chip can be used to observe correct input-output pairs as a black box. So based on these two components, an attacker will try to learn what is the key for logic locking and unlock the circuit. One type of uh, attack algorithm is called key search based attack. 
So the basic idea is to try to test the correctness of a gas key using a subset of correct input-output pairs. And so it will try to uh, try the key and then compare the output with a pre-selected uh, set of input output, correct input output pairs. And however, this attack has two drawbacks. So the first drawback is the scalability. So it has been shown that when the key size is large and when the key gate types and location are carefully selected, uh, this attack cannot terminate within a practical time limit. And the second drawback is correctness. So because this key is only tested using only a subset of input-output pairs, so it cannot guarantee to be correct for the complete functionality. So in last year, a new type of attack called satisfiability-based satisfiability attack is, was proposed. So this attack has two advantages compared to a previous attacks. So the first advantage is it guarantees to obtain the correct key with respect to all input-output pairs upon termination. And also, the, sec the second advantage is it's very efficient. So it can break uh, most logic locking techniques proposed in five previous works within a few hours, even for a reasonably large number of key gates. So uh, here I will introduce the set attack algorithm. The basic idea is to iteratively find a set of special inputs and observe their outputs until they can identify all the wrong key combinations. So one key point here is like uh, the set attack will try to use correct input output pairs to identify wrong key combination. So here is a simple example. For this log circuit, if we give a if an input x equals to 1, 1, the correct output will be 0, 1. And this correct input output pair will identify the wrong key combinations, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, because these three key combinations will result in incorrect outputs. So that's uh, how set attack use the correct input output pairs to eliminate uh, wrong key combinations. So notice that normally um, one correct input output pairs can only eliminate uh, one subset of key, wrong key combinations. So the set attack will iteratively uh, find this set of special input output pairs called distinguishing input output pair to identify uh, wrong key combinations until all the wrong key combinations have been identified. So uh, the right figure here demonstrates the process. So each uh, distinguishing input output pair will eliminate, uh, will identify one wrong key uh, combinations. And with iteration progress, um, the wrong key combinations space will, redu will be reduced. And after a few iterations, all the wrong key uh, combinations have been identified and the set attack can learn the correct key. So the over overall flow of the set attack is shown as follows. So firstly, a set formula is constructed based on the log circuit. So basically, this uh, set formula try to find a distinguishing input that can find wrong key combinations. So if, the, if this set formula is solvable, then the set solver will find a distinguishing input, SID, at ith iteration. And then if put this uh, input SID into an activated chip, and obtain the correct output YID. So we have a new pair of distinguishing input and output. And this new pair of distinguishing input and output will be used to update the set formula. So the new set formula will ensure that uh, future distinguishing input output pairs can find new uh, wrong key combinations that cannot be found in previous iterations. So after a few iterations, the set formula will not be satisfiable then a correct key can be found. So this correct key will, should be the key that satisfies all the distinguishing input-output pairs that are found in previous iterations. So uh, one key point here is that it, this algorithm is very efficient because the number of iterations required to identify all the wrong key combinations is very small. So because 
uh, this attack is an iterative process. The total, num the total execution time depends on the set solving time for one iteration and the total number of iterations. So the set solving time for one iteration depends on benchmark characteristics. So some hard set circuits like multiplier will require a longer time to be solved. And based on this idea, uh, Yassin and his uh, colleague proposed to add an AES block to increase the set solving time. So they claim that the AES block with a fixed key behaves as a, a one-way function, and the set solver will find it very challenging to solve a circuit that is comprised with, uh, with an AES module. However, the drawback here is it will introduce a very significant overhead. So the total number of iteration depends on key size and key gate locations. However, um, as pointed in the original set attack paper, uh, previous logic locking techniques cannot effectively counter the set attack. So in this paper, we try to uh, we propose uh, an anti-set block such that the number of iteration lambda is an exponential function of the key size of the anti-set blocks. So, an attack, so the set attack will fail within a practical limit when the number of key size is large. Here is an N input uh, anti-set block. It consists of two N input logic blocks, G and G bar. So these two logic blocks have uh, complementary functionality. So when G output one, G bar will output zero. So two N key gates, either XOR or XNOR, are inserted at the input of G and G bar. And the output of two logic blocks are fed into an N gate to produce the final output Y. So one property of the anti-set block is that for the correct key, the output of the anti-set block is always zero. This is possible for some key combinations, which ensures that the output of G and G bar are always complementary. So with this property, we can integrate the anti-set block with an original circuit to protect the circuit. So here is a simple example. So the original while F and the anti-set block output Y can be integrated together using a, an SOR gate. So when given a correct key, the output Y will be zero, and the SOR gate behaves as a buffer, so the original functionality F can be recovered. So here we try to prove the security of our proposed anti-set block. Uh, we define output one count to be the number of input vectors which make the function G output one. So the theorem is for as follows. Assuming the output one count P of the N input function G is sufficiently close to one or sufficiently close to two to the N minus one, the number of iteration lambda needed by the set attack to decipher the correct key is lower bounded by two to the N. So the sketch of the proof is as follows. So firstly, uh, we have assumed that the output one count is P. So there is this P input vectors that make a G output one, and two to the N minus P input vector that make G bar output one. Then we show that each iteration, the set attack can only identify at most P times two to the N minus P unique wrong key combinations. Then we show that the total number of wrong key combinations equals to two to the two n minus two to the n. With the bullet two and three, we can obtain this relationship. We show that uh, the set attack requires lambda larger than or equal to two to the two n minus two to the n over p times two to the n minus p iterations to identify all the wrong key combinations. So following the results in bullet four, we can show that when P is close to one or when P is close to two to the N minus one, we can have the number of iteration lambda greater or equals to two to the N. And because the number of keys is K equals to two N, so we have shown that the number of iteration is an exponential function of the key size. 
So here is a configuration when p is equals to one. So when p is equals to one, the function block g is actually an n input n gate. So the configuration is shown as the right figure. So with this configuration, the, we can show that the number of iteration is exactly two to the n, where, where n is the input size. So when n is large, um, the number of iterations will be uh, very large, and the set attack complexity will be uh, is unpractical to use set attack to uh, learn the key. So in the paper, we also discussed another two questions. The first is how to integrate the end step block with the uh, original circuit, such that the number of uh, iteration is still an exponential function of the key size. And the second question is how to prevent removal attack. So because the anti set block is an isolated uh, module compared to the original circuit, so it is possible to use a mean cup partitioning based removal attack to isolate this anti set block. So we have proposed some uh, obfuscation techniques to increase the in interconnectivity between two modules to prevent this type of attacks. So due to the time limit, I uh, will not discuss these two in this presentation. So here is the set attack results on our proposed anti-set block. So we have shown that the re we have shown the relationship between the number of iteration lambda, the input size n, and the output one count p. And we have shown that when p is close to one or p is close to two to the n minus one, we have lambda. Uh, approaching two to the n. So this is validated in the left figure. So we can see that uh, when, so in the left figure, the input size n is fixed at 16. And we can see that when the, imp, uh, when the output one count p is very low or when the output one count p is very high, the number of iterations and the execution time is very large, are very large. So the right figure shows the results when p equals to one and changing the input size n. So we can see that when p equals to one, the number of iterations is two to the n. So the set attack capacity goes uh, exponentially in input size n. And in the second experiment, we try to uh, evaluate the security of our proposed anti set block when it's integrated with uh, six benchmark ranging from 500 gates to 6,000 gates. So we compare three setups. So the first setup uh, we call TOC13. So it's a conventional logic locking techniques. It tries to insert SR or S0 gates at the original netlist to increase output corruptibility. So in this setup, no any set block is inserted. So the second setup is called TLC 13 5%, uh, which insert key gates at the original netlist using TLC 13 algorithm with 5% overhead budget. And we also insert uh, an input baseline any set block. This any set block uh, is not obfuscated to prevent the removal attack. So the first setup is TOC 13, 5%, plus uh, any input obfuscated any set block. So obfuscation is utilized in this setup. Here is the first part of the results. So the red line here is the TOC 13. The black line is TOC 13, 5% plus uh, obfuscated anti set block, and the blue line is TOC 13, 5% plus baseline anti set block. So here is the second part of the results. So we can see that for TOC 13 only, the set attack can unlock all six circuits in about 48 iterations and using about nine seconds. So after uh, inserting our uh, proposed anti set block, we can see there is a exponential chain between the number of iterations and the key size. So the reason why the obfuscated any set block, the growth rate of the obfuscated any set block is slower than the baseline any set block is that um, because the, in the obfuscated any set block, a portion of the keys are used to obfuscate the structure of the any set block 
to prevent the removal attack. So uh, finally, th this is the performance overhead estimation. So the blue line here is the extrapolated uh, execution time for set attack. And the orange line here is the area overhead for our proposed technique. We can see that a linear increase in uh, area overhead can result in exponential increase in set attack computation complexity. And to ensure one year set attack time, uh, our approach uh, will result in about 7% overhead. So in conclusion, uh, in this work, we propose uh, an anti set block to mitigate the set attack on logic locking. And we show that the number of iterations for set attack to review the correct key is exponential to the key size of the anti set block. And we propose some obfuscation techniques to defend the removal attack. And finally, we validate that a linear increase in performance overhead can result in exponential increase in set attack computation complexity. That's all. Thank you.